pray to understand there were many individuals, possibly millions who came before them, who went through exactly the same temptations and the desires. Obviously, to be fair, there are at times slight differences in the environment. Certain environments can begin to increase the love of shahawat, of desires, and create falling into temptations. That's the ulama mentioned that there are two diseases which have struck his blessed Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amma shubuhat, either doubts in our aqaid, in our belief, corrupt beliefs that we find that many individuals, unfortunately, wama yu'minu akthirum billahi illa wahum mushrikun. Many Muslims believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala, but their belief at times is tainted with shirk. They have a corrupt belief. And the Quran tells us quite clearly and explicitly to stay away from any form of shirk. Inna Allah la yaghfir an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive any sin that you commit. But if you die upon the path of committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that individual will not be forgiven. As mentioned twice inside Surah Al-Nisa with a slightly different ending. And the most powerful verse inside the Qur'an warning this Muslim Ummah that those individuals who die upon shirk, who commit shirk billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, in no man yushrik billahi faqad harram allahu alayhi jannah wa ma'wahum na wa ma'lil zalimina min ansar. The Qur'an is telling us for some people they believe it's a da'wah of a certain people or a certain movement. This is the da'wah of the Qur'an. These people should challenge the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating, in no man yushrik billah. Whoever dies committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has made it haram ala hadha shakhs and yadkhul jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it's haram for this person to ever go into paradise. This is a stern warning that a Muslim should learn the pristine belief فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا If you believe as they believe, you will be rightly guided. The belief of whom? The belief of the Anbiya, the belief of the companions. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِكِ الرَّسُولِ Whoever contends with the messenger after the guidance has been shown to that individual. وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And follows a path other than the way of the believers. Indeed, that path will lead an individual into the path of Jahannam. Who are the believers inside this ayah, inside Surah Al-Nisa? The believers are none other than the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. That is the first disease that we find, that a large portion of Muslims have corrupt belief, and they need to rectify their belief. The other half of this Muslim ummah is surrounded by hubbu shahawad, a love of desires, of temptation, that people know what the right belief is. But you find that more and more young individuals begin to fall into, into ma'asiyah, into dis disobedience, into the law, or the fusuq, or the fujur, all types of rebellious, and wicked, immoral behavior and actions that the youth begin to fall into. And yes, the task is a difficult task. As we began with, that we are surrounded by many obstacles. We are surrounded by such slogans as the Quran itself documents. أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوتِ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَفَّرُونَ Get rid of the people of Lut alayhi salam from the people. Get rid of them. إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَفَّرُونَ These are people who want to be purified. They want to be good people. Get rid of these people. These are the same slogans that we find today. Anybody calling towards any goodness, towards good practice, staying away from haram, sticking to the halal, halal staying away from the fawahish. You find not just amongst non-Muslims, unfortunately you find even some Muslims begin to say, what type of thought, what type of belief is this? And as the Qur'an warns those individuals, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَحِبُّونَ أَنْ تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا الْآخِرَةِ Those who like to spread immorality, wickedness, promiscuity, lewdness, sexual misconduct inside society, لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا الْآخِرَةِ but those individuals will be severe punishment inside this dunya and likewise inside the akhirah. So these are the challenges that we're surrounded by. 
And likewise, we find that to enter into paradise is not something easy as many of us young individuals we think. My father is a sheikh, my father is an imam, my brother is half of the Quran, my sister wears hijab, my mother wears niqab, I'm affiliated with this masjid, and this will suffice me. It is a, a journey, a tough journey that the Quran does not look at your relationship towards certain people. It looks at what are your own actions, especially in reach the age of puberty. Every individual is responsible for their own selves. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created paradise. And Jibreel alayhi salam, you look in the book, Kitab al-Jannah, Sifatu Na'imiha wa Ahliha, inside Sahih Muslim. Jibreel alayhi salam went to see paradise. And said that whoever sees paradise, paraphrasing the hadith, the embezzlement, the beauty, will want to dive straight into paradise. And whoever sees Jahannam, the rage, the, pun the punishment, the anguish, the fire, will want to stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, surround paradise with obstacles. And surround the hellfire with temptations and desires. This is a hadith, it's on the Sahih of Imam Muslim. So paradise is surrounded. Paradise is surrounded by obstacles. And Jahannam is surrounded with temptations. Every path of shahwa, every path of desires of temptations, eventually leads the person closer and closer towards Jahannam. Imam al nawawi centuries ago, making shah of this hadith, the magnanimous work of 18, 19 volumes. One of his classical works that we find is the Sharh of Sahih Muslim. He highlights what are the obstacles that prevent a person from going into, into paradise. So the obstacles a person needs to overcome to eventually get into paradise. He highlights there are four obstacles. The first obstacle he highlights, the path to paradise is al-ijtihad fil ibadah, is to strive and struggle to remain constant upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafidhu ala salawati wa salati wa wa qumu lillahi qaniti. Preserve and guard your prayers. And especially the middle prayer, وَقَوْرُ الرَّاجِحِ The most accurate statement, the middle prayer, is Salat al-Asr. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ And stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of devotion and commitment. So this is the ijtihad in ibadat. That the person needs to remain constant, coming for Salat al-Fajr in the summer days, for Salat al-Isha. This is the way of the believer. Give glad tidings to the individuals who walk in the realms of darknesses. Give them glad tidings. Those who come walking for Salat al-Fajr in the the depth of the darkness of the night, and likewise Salat al-Isha. That's you find the most difficult prayer from the Munafiqoon, the hypocrites, is Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. And you can conclude yourselves, how many young individuals, even Muslim activists, you find them for Salat al-Fajr inside the masjid. You can count how many people come to the masjid. There's probably only going to be a few individuals. How many were these young individuals? So we're talking about this lofty goals and aspirations, but this is the asas. This is the foundation after belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to remain constant upon your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, the rest of the fara'id, the fasting, the month of Ramadan, the performance of hajj, giving of zakat, is all the way of the believer. The person, mu'min, perseveres, remains committed and on that path. Never, you need fall short in serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's you find the Quran mentions, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ The end of Surah Al-Hijr, the 15th chapter of the Quran, worship your Lord, until certainty comes to you. Here you find a Sufiya, they say, Al-Yaqeen, Bima'na Al-Ilham, wal kash and all these other meanings, that you will come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you some form of inspiration. This is khata, it's a big mistake, according to the language of the Quran, tafsir of the Quran. Wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyat al-Yaqeen, worship your Lord, hatta al-Mawt, until death. Persevere in ibadat. The Prophet Muhammad so never ever gave up ibadat. Never tried to follow a shortcut. Remain persevered. As salah, as salah, wa ma malakat imanukum. If there's any individual who could have given up the prayer inside his life, and no one could question that, it would have been the Prophet Muhammad. But yet, amongst his final words, ulama of hadith have collected three or four days before his death, or upon his final words, as salah, as salah, the prayer, the prayer, remaining constant upon the prayer, and advising this Muslim ummah to hold fast to the prayer. The second obstacle that we find is. But some Muslims are able to carry out their obligatory duties. They are able to display themselves as Muslims. But these core inner elements of belief, many young Muslims unfortunately don't have it. 
being able to literally carries the meaning of swallowing one's anger. That's the path of a muttaqi, a pious individual. That a person swallows their anger. When they get angry, they swallow it. They don't come, become enraged in their anger. Many young Muslims get frustrated over petty affairs, begin to curse or begin to revile or make statements. That's not the path of a person heading towards paradise. These are makarih. These are disliking things. The person has to overcome them to follow the true path of paradise. The third thing that he mentions after swallowing one's anger is al-afu, is to be able to pardon mankind. The person doesn't just swallow their anger, you forgive another human being. This is amongst the methodology of the Prophet Muhammad so that many of us have forgotten. When he returned back into Mecca, he saved people who slit his cheek, he spit his blood, killed so many members of his, of, his, of his family. What did he highlight to these individuals when they thought he's going to come back? And the non-Muslim tried to depict him that he's going to spill their blood. What did he say to them? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وأرحم الراحمين No blame upon you this day. No blame upon you this day. The words of Yusuf alayhi salam. No blame upon you. No reproach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that forgives. That's the life of a mu'min, the believer. The believer is able to overcome many obstacles in one's life and able to pardon and forgive people no matter what people may have done to the individual. And then the fourth principle that Imam Nawi mentioned centuries ago is as-sabr and is shahawat Note this has been mentioned centuries ago. Imam Nawi writes to have patience to stay away from temptations and desires. If you stay away from temptation and desires, you are heading on a path which is heading towards paradise. And all of this is extracted from the verse inside the Quran, inside Surah Ali Imran, that race with one another in gaining that paradise whose width is like the heavens and the earth. Or iddatil muttaqeen, which has been prepared for the pious individuals. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْنِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَلِ الْنَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Some verse 131 or so, 132, Surah Ali Imran. These are the characteristics of the pious individual. Those who spend the time when they have their wealth, in times of ease, in times of adversity, in times of difficulty. Those who swallow their anger and those who pardon mankind. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the doers of good. These are the characteristics of the muttaqoon. And thus we find that to reach that upper level, a person needs to develop that inside their life. And thus, we, as we mentioned, it's true that the level of difficulties around us is very, very difficult. But if a person is able to tune themselves, to control themselves, then there's much khayr and goodness for that individual in following any of that path. And thus we find that natural gharisa at times, the natural shahwa of the individual, this society plays upon that, what they call the testosterone that we know in men, it's different from women. And thus the society begins to encourage the falling of, of desires and the falling of temptations. But look back at the prophetic teachings. What do we find? That young individuals should fast, should wrestle, should be able to use a weapon, ride a horse, to swim. How many young Muslims are able to do any form of activity of such nature? It's either one dimension or another dimension. It's either spiritual dimension, it's either economic dimension, or it's just a mental dimension, or it becomes an academic dimension. The real believer is complete in everything. Prepare for them all concept of war. War doesn't just mean just you know, the physical element. It means spiritually, it means financially, it means physically, it means mentally, it means everything. The whole network is created. But we seem to just go to one dimension to another dimension. This is true. وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهُ رَمَا When you threw, it wasn't you that threw. It was indeed Allah that threw that dust to go into the eyes. But there's no harm in preparing oneself. That's how you create the ideal Muslim society. That you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can and you begin to create that within ourselves. And the results are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are amongst the prophetic traditions that we find centuries ago encouraging us to engage ourselves in these sports, to lessen our desires, to keep us engaged. Because the nafs, if it's given the opportunity, will fall towards evil at times. As the Quran mentions in Surah Yusuf, in the nafsa la ammaratun bisu illa ma rahima rabbi. If the soul is given the opportunity, if it's placed in that environment, it will fall towards evil. And these ayat, siyaq al ayat, are talking about whom? Are talking about yani Yusuf, yani alayhi salam. He was surrounded by many temptations of this woman. What happened to him when he's surrounded by this? He's safe. Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remains patient upon that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never ever let the iman of the pious individuals go to waste. So it was his consciousness, his belief in 